There are many beautiful trophies in the Indianapolis Hall of Fame, won by men who established the traditions of the 500. But traditions were made to be broken. What's that you say? A woman going to drive in the 500? Yes, there she is, Janet Guthrie. Not everybody can drive race cars. It takes a, a peculiar sort of person. The objective was to be the fastest. It became an obsession. I was blissfully unaware there could even exist any issue but because I was a woman. I mean, so what? <laughs> Janet really was a pretty good driver. Uh, she was extremely smooth, she was calm, and uh, she didn't let anything get her agitated and shook up. I'd been racing for 13 years. I had a long record that was a good record. And that was the point at which I got a call from a long time Indy 500 car builder and team owner, Rolla Volstead, asking if I'd like to take a shot at the Indianapolis 500. Well, Rolla Volstead had always been an innovator. At some point, he decided he'd like to be the first team owner to bring a woman driver to Indianapolis. He started asking his sports car racing friends, and he kept getting my name. Uh, that was the one thing I did have, uh, was a reputation. This was a whole new ball game. What I didn't anticipate was the outrage that it would cause. They just simply did not want a woman to break into that field. It'd be like, you know, some unbelievably fast woman going out for wide receiver on the New York Giants. I mean, the guys would go nuts. The general idea was women don't have the strength, the endurance, the emotional stability. Women are going to endanger our lives. The only way that I could put a stop to this was on the racetrack. There she is, Janet Guthrie. She actually ran in the low 70s. But today it takes at least 181 to make the race. The uproar was such that down in Charlotte, Humpy Wheeler said, boy, wouldn't it be great if we could get some of this attention called to our 600 mile race on Memorial Day. The media was just eating her up. It was the first time I didn't have to call a press conference to announce anything because the press followed her down here. <laughs> NASCAR was uh, more difficult to make headway in, in an atmosphere that was really not entirely comfortable. Well, yeah, I remember this was 76. A bunch of big, meaty fisted, tough guys racing. They uh, associated feminism with sissies. They just didn't know me yet. They got used to the notion that I wasn't going to be intimidated. This is the first woman driver in the history of this race who's giving a good account of herself. This is Janet Guthrie in car number 68. As you see, she's in 14th place. I was top rookie. I think it's something I can be proud of. The 1977 Indianapolis 500 saw history being made. In 77, it was a better car. I knew from the tachometer that the speed had been fast enough to earn a starting spot in the field. The first woman wins her starting place in the field. I was thinking to myself, you know, my life is never going to be the same. <laughs> and indeed, uh, it wasn't. She was thrown into this maelstrom of males that was pretty tough bunch of guys. She had an intercept. In the 15th lap, Janet Guthrie made the first of eight frustrating pit stops in an unsuccessful attempt to cure a sick engine and finish the race. Janet Guthrie is hanging on, running in the top 10. We ended up with the top 10 spot, ninth. And now the Lady Janet Guthrie takes the flag. She is ninth in the race. And that was the best finish by a woman at Indianapolis until 2005. And so many sponsor finders came to me and said, with what you did last year and publicity you brought to the track, finding money for you will be like falling off a log. And it didn't happen. There's a certain amount of controversy associated with it because the guys didn't want her there. Sponsors don't like controversy. I didn't quit willingly. I ran out of money. Am I reconciled to the fact that I wasn't able to continue and set the kind of record that I knew I was capable of setting? No, I'll never be reconciled to that. But that's life. You don't always get what you want. I was a racing driver through and through. 
if this created opportunities for women in other fields, I was glad of that, but it's not why I was there. I don't think you'd see Danica Patrick or uh, a lot of the other uh, females that got into it because she opened the door for a lot of young girls to come up and, and start driving. Danica's a very capable driver and I'm sure she'll do well. Sometimes I, I go looking at the comments uh, when an article on Danica appears on online and I'm always astonished at, at the hostility that appears in, in these comments. It's a little worrisome to see it all still going on. It takes 110% of what you've got to be competitive. Janet Guthrie will always be one of my favorite race drivers because she did it with grace, she did it with dignity, but she also did it with a right foot that went all the way down to the floorboard. It was a huge part of my life. I'd like to be remembered as a hell of a good racing driver and a lady, I hope. <laughs>